has uh, itchy, red, irritation. It can also help the skin response after, so it doesn't seem so bad. And here's a great regimen to start off with it. For an example, the Ageless Cleanser, a little bit of glycolic, so it's going to exfoliate and really prep the skin to be a nice, smooth, even feel. The Aluma Bleaching Serum is going to help, I'm sorry, the Brightening Serum uh, is a botanical option uh, as a serum that helps with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Uh, and you'll find that if you deal with acne clients or lightening clients, or even clients that want a deeper peel, uh, this is a great option so it reduces some of that visible pigmentation you might see. Uh, everybody needs sunscreen, so pre and post peel, you want to make sure this is in their regimen, in their skincare diet, and then they have a nighttime hydrating option with the repair cream there. This retinol A cream, they can rotate, and that's going to give that re retinol's great for exfoliation and, and stimulating the skin response uh, to create more collagen and production. Okay. So uh, here we go. We're going to talk about the difference between AHAs and BHAs and what they actually are and enzymes. So AHAs are alpha hydroxy acids and their main function, they start to loosen those desmosomes to induce keratinocyte desquamation. And what that means is our cells have a brick and mortar like structure. Uh, between them. So those alpha hydroxy acids will help to break down uh, that that brick and mortar that cements the, the skin together uh, to create that barrier. So you can uh, break it down with some active acids like the AHA is listed here. Glycolic acid is a common AHA, lactic, malic, tartaric, and citric acid. Uh, alpha hydroxy acids are great to reduce fine lines and promote hydration and help with mild skin discolorations. It does support collagen and elastin. Now, uh, the other type of keratolytic is a BHA, a beta hydroxy acid. The uh, salicylic acid is the BHA that we use in a lot of our, in our treatments. Uh, and it is also in the clear cell collection of products. It's an oil soluble acid that has the ability to permeate the pore, reduce a lot of that sapacious activity, a lot of that oiliness, gland activity, and it lifts the congestion from inside the pore. So you can see how that would really be good for someone that had a lot of uh, sebaceous activity and congested pore simultaneously. These are some non-acid keratolytics, like enzymes, which typically come from a plant-based scenario, uh, from a plant-based source. So a lot of our enzymes, we der derive it from pumpkin, vitamin C, papaya, and this is a much more uh, gentler type of exfoliation. So fruit enzymes are naturally derivative formulations that provide a mild softening and exfoliation of the stratum corneum, but are usually gentler than an acid peel or a physical exfoliation. Now that's very true because this, you don't have to use a, manipu a hand manipulation to actually get an exfoliation. So I'm curious if any of you have an idea of what products, what retail products or image skincare products that currently exist that have enzymes as their, as their non-acid keratolytic. Think of the vitamin C line. Anybody know? Think of the Aluma line. Go ahead and type in. I'll, I'll be curious. And when I end this slide, I'll see who has the right answer. So some physical exfoliation products. Uh, they use ingredients or a tool to gently exfol exfoliate and remove dead skin cells from the surface of the skin. So things like manual scrubs, microdermabrasion, a loofah from the body, not the face, <laughs> but it is the physical exfoliator. Uh, microderm offers a mild to moderate exfoliation depending on the discretion of the practitioner. So you have some options there. Can anybody think of any manual scrubs? 
that image has. Go ahead, I'll give you guys time to type in a couple of answers and see if we have some. No answers yet, but I'll give you the clue. So think of our enzymes and what products have enzymes in it. We have the Vital C Hydrating Enzyme Mass. It's that wonderful creamy mass, but it also has digestive pumpkin enzymes in it. So you can apply this to someone who's seeing visible exfoliation a few days after peel to reduce that expo exfoliation. Or if somebody is super sensitive and can't handle a manual scrub, that's man manipulation. Try that vitamin C hydrating enzyme mask. It'll feel cool on the skin, it'll hydrate it, and it'll use those digestive enzymes to gently uh, uh, remove the dead surface debris. Okay, next is choosing the correct solution. So now that we've talked about the active acids versus enzymes, we want to make sure that we address uh, specific concerns of our client and create the right solutions for them in a treatment series and home care. So fourth important things when recommending treatment are establishing first the client's needs. We want to address what they want to see the difference in. Even though we might think it's something different, uh, uh, what they would want to see, what, what we feel like their skin needs to go in the direction, we also want to make sure we're, we address the, what the client wants to see and make the biggest difference in first. pH. pH is a huge factor when choosing the right peel. Fitzpatrick and then hereditary influence. We're gonna talk about these in the next few slides. So the first step is to gather and establish the client needs. You wanna ask what change would you like to see on their skin? Maybe they're more concerned about the pigmentation over their occasional blemishes. So gather the pertinent information, capture the content info. You wanna determine the Fitzpatrick type uh, and for those of you who are familiar, the Fitzpatrick scale is a scale to which we measure the rate at which someone burns or reacts to skin, or I'm sorry, the sun. Uh, so one being those lighter Fitzpatricks all the way up to six, seven, or those darker Fitzpatricks. Hang on, I'm gonna bring up my chart here. One moment. Okay. So, um, when you determine the Fitzpatrick, we have a couple of slides that you're going to go on there. You'll also want to make sure the client is using uh, products at home that's going to have some of the actives uh, inside of them to introduce them to the, the treatment that they might be experiencing. So, it's good to have that healthy skincare diet uh, start at home about two weeks prior to the appointment. Uh, and you want to develop a regiment at home uh, as well. So these treatment theories that you're about to encounter are, are gel-based peels. You can do them, uh, uh, the Ormetic, you guys currently use the Ormetic Lift, the Signature Lift, the Rapa Lift. The it's too hot for me. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, are there any questions? You're kind of quiet on your end over there, so I want to make sure you're you're still following me on some of that. Okay, I got a couple of yeses. Thank you. All right. So the pH of the skin, uh, you normally skin is about a 5.5 pH. Okay. So the lower the pH, the deeper the penetration of the solution. So here it is. This, the pH scale. Uh, where ideal skin, you can see, is around that 5, 5.5. And uh, the lower the pH, the more acidic it is. And the higher, the more alkaline. So chemical peels are going to be on the lower side of the pH scale. And things like glycerin soap are going to be more alkaline. Uh, lye supplies cleaners, they're on a 
opposite end of the spectrum. From um, a pinky down, six is 10 times stronger. So when you go down, each uh, from seven to six to six to five, those are all 10 times the strength difference than the last. That understood by everyone? Okay, so this is why it's so important to maintain a, a balanced pH of the skin. And again, all of our cleansers are pH balanced, so it's going to bring you to that perfect 5.5. And like I said, the pH, the lower the percentage, pH percentage, the deeper, deeper penetration of the solution. Um, the higher percentage does not always mean a stronger peel. Here's our Fitzpatrick's that I promised you. I knew I had this in here. Okay. So um, Fitzpatrick one, they categorize as light, pale, never burns, never tan. I'm sorry, always burns, never tans. Our Fitzpatrick uh, is so important because uh, I'll tell you this before I describe the different types here. The way we respond to a peel is the same way that we'll respond to a burn, to a sunburn, right? So usually these this um, one, two, and three types Fitzpatricks are you're going to see that they will uh, have that reddening response. They usually burn. They're more reactive. And after that, they start to heal. But when you get to those darker Fitzpatricks, they don't burn so much, but they pigment because melanin is more prominent in those darker Fitzpatricks skin types. So their skin response uh, would be to pigment, which is uh, kind of what the opposite you want to happen when you are providing a chemical peel treatment. So it's best to treat them slow and low so you don't create that skin response. Uh, so quickly. So starting at the at type one, we have always burns, never tans, light to kind of white. Type two is very fair still and usually burns, but tans with some difficulty. Type three Fitzpatrick is medium, white to olive, sometimes mildly burns, but gradually tans. Four, olive, moderate brown, rarely burns, tans with ease. Uh, tans with ease, type five, rarely burns, tans very easily, and that type six, never burns, uh, deeply pigment. So this is just a way to... Jay Raddy, and when is she living over there? Also affects this uh, 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 appeal. So you want to see how tolerant they're going to be able to, uh, how tolerant their skin is going to be uh, to be able to do some different types of uh, actives in their skin. This gives you a visual on the depth of the peel for penetration. So when we're talking about superficial peels, they're more enzyme-based and botanical-based, like the Ormatic and Signature Lift. Uh, the more superficial peels, like some of those acids, the AJ and the BHAs, uh, uh, will hit the stratum luteum or the stratum frangibosum part of the skin. I don't know, I just okay. tried and then medium AHAs, the AHAs, to those advanced self-neutralizing peels, which I don't feel you guys have, they reach more of the base layers, the stratum spinosum, the stratum basal layer, and the dermis. And in that layer where the, the, uh, the epidermal junction is in the stratum basal and the dermis layer, that's where the skin response tends to happen. Okay? And they will, uh, when peels come in contact with the skin, they encourage that exfoliation. We're going to talk about the different variations of how that happens. See, go so it I'm exfoliates like, those dead today. keratinocytes on the surface layer, and it creates that skin response that happens in that dermal epidermal junction in that stratum basal dermis layer to create more collagen, to create more elastin, to turn over the cell structure so you because you're exfoliating the old and we're revealing the new and the youthful 
Just the what? Are you here? I think that um, that was a good start. Anybody have any questions? You guys have been so quiet on your end. Okay. I'll take that as you're, you're absorbing all that I have to say, but please let me know if you need some more uh, in-depth information or if I'm getting too in-depth. Uh, okay, so we talked about the preparation portion of the skin. Now we're getting, uh, we talked about Yana, our liquid collagen supplement and our 360 degree approach from inside out. Then we're talking about the repair portion of it. This is the treatment portion of the service. So we're going to have one of these peels as our selections uh, for their treatment repair options because they want to see those results. We have a beautiful peel collection, and this image is representing the entire collection. You have some of these um, that you guys are working with, but all of our gel-based peels, the ones that you work with, have complexes. Uh, they each have five, these six different complexes. I said five. <laughs> they each have these six different complexes that are in common with each other that set our peels apart. So all of our gel peels have this organic aloe vera gel base. It makes it so nice because you get a hydrated peel and it doesn't drip, it doesn't pool, and it makes them massageable, which is nice. Um, they have a plant-based derivative stem cell technology that are specific to the peel in the skin indication that you're treating. So we use beautiful plant-based stem cells like comfrey, centella, echinacea, udaleha, and lilac to complement the peel to treat the skin. Each of these peels has a botanical lightening complex like luminescent. It's pronounced lumina luminescent. I'm sorry, I mispronounced that. Lumins. Ooh, tongue twister. Okay, but we'll get into it in a little bit. Forgive me for not being able to say that. Sea shine, bearberry, licorice, and mulberry. So these are all botanical blade, botanical based lightning complexes. Excuse me. Let me have a little sip of my water. Maybe that'll help. Thank you. We also have a detox complex, which uh, we commonly use eucalyptus and ylang-ylang, an energy complex in coffee and peppermint, and a, prote a protection complex, mallow extract, ladies mantle, arnica montana, green tea, comfrey, and blackberry. So once again, this collection of peels, each one of them you will find these six different complexes that uh, really set our peels superior apart from those on the market. Um, and here's the different levels of peels that we offer. Our enzymes are very superficial. They're the mildest, and they are the O2 lift, the ormetic lift, and the signature lift. Our lip one acids are our lightning lift, our wrinkle lift, and our acne lift. These are a little bit more superficial. Uh, so think of the, the chart. Yeah. And then we have level two acids, which are the like a wrinkle lift forte, lightning lift forte, and level three, still medium grade strength, um, advanced VH, lift for perfection lift, and the forte option. This is a product that's called for in all of our peel treatments. It's called the uh, it's alpha beta solution safely prepares the skin for any exfoliation treatment. It degreases and removes the excess oil. It lowers the pH so the peel can become more permeable. And it provides antioxidant and anti-inflammatory benefits to the skin. Like pollen and salicylic, green tea, chamomile, chamomile, and witch hazel. So this, uh, this solution is really essential to getting an effective peel. You can apply a little bit into the medicine book and put your two, if it's two by two balls in there, swizzle it out, squeeze it out because you don't want it to run or drip, you know, be too saturated. And then uh, swipe the skin. Now, a professional trick is the more, the more times this passes over the skin, 
uh, the deeper the exfoliation and the treatment because it's going to strip the skin more of all that? the excess oil and makeup and different and uh, uh, lower that pH. So if you have some really tough skin out there, you want to do a couple passes with this. And if you're uh, a little bit more heavy handed, I would say aggressive, but if you have a little bit more of a, a deeper touch when you're exfoliating, then uh, you're, you're really going to get some results. Okay. So decreasing from, oops, sorry. So let's talk about those enzyme peels first. Uh, this is specific to all the services that you provide. So we're not going to be talking about um, all of the peels. We'll be talking about the ones that you currently are providing. Uh, and the first one is the O2 Lift. It is the mildest uh, treatment that we offer. It's a red carpet treatment. You can do this uh, because it has no downtime. Um, you can it has very little downtime, I'll say. Uh, little to no downtime. You can do this. It's great for a makeup application, and it's great. Oops, sorry about my messages here. I didn't realize those were going to come up. Okay, so um, you can do this before a makeup application. You can do this uh, before a night out on the town, or you can do this in a treatment series. So all of the treatments that you currently provide you can do in a series of six of them. They're best spaced two weeks apart, and you can start them on uh, an enzymatic treatment like this, and then acclimate them to a deep, deeper treatment uh, to target what the end result is gonna be of their series. So again, these uh, peels that you perform, you can do a treatment series of six of them, space them two weeks apart, and you can actually repeat this once a season for four times, so four times a year. This O2 Lift it is a wonderful treatment. It's an oxygenating treatment that combines uh, exfoliation technology with oxygen therapy and a lot of stem cells. You will have instant results to this. You'll feel smoother, the skin will glow, uh, and it really is a nice uh, uh, treatment for someone that has like dark, sullen gray skin and they really need to get the, the blood flow going and perk up their gray skin, gray dull skin. So I love to do this for, for um, aging clients that are concerned about, you know, skin, lax skin, uh, and you can see that they have, they could do with uh, a glow and a bright brightening touch up. Oh goodness, I'm so sorry about my messages. If you're all, I'll just X out of them. Okay, so in this, it's a five P. treatment. It labels the uh, steps one by one. The first one is the gel to milk cleanser. The second is step is the enzyme peel, the oxygenating face mask the stem cell enhancer and the tinted SPF. Oops, I want to be fast. So this is a perfect, oh, it says it right there, perfect treatment for a special night or maintenance in a treatment peel series. This is also great for teens as well. They love this treatment and uh, really selfie ready. So if you have one of those teens that likes to take pictures of themselves, the foaming mask is definitely uh, fun to photograph as well. So we're gonna talk about the actual step-by-step -step protocol right now. I'm just checking questions, see if any questions came through before I start that. So you guys feel a little bit uh, more comfortable with walking through the step-by-steps. Uh, and feel free, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. How many of you love this treatment? How many of you have tried it? If you have, tell, let me know your, what you think of this treatment, or if you have any challenges in the treatment room let me know and I'll, I'm going to walk you through the step by step right now and give you the pro tips and tricks to providing the treatment. So let's say you have a client walks in through your door. I'm going to pick Jody as my client and pretend I'm talking to her right now. Hi Jody. I'm so happy to see you today. We're going to be our O2 lift treatment. Um, this treatment is uh, going to have no downtime to it, but I would love you to take a post-treatment trial at home. It's gonna be your home care. 
and your skin is going to glow, be more hydrated, and soft to the touch. So great, let's go. Now I'm going to talk to you guys as, as esthetician to esthetician and walk you through the protocol and tell you how I've had the best success with performing. So uh, usually when clients come in, some of them will tend to wear a lot of makeup. No problem here. The first step is that O2 Lift Gel to Milk Cleanser. It's actually the Aluma Cleanser. Take about three or four pumps in your hands. Your hands can be damp to dry. And it's really, this is awesome to use uh, as a pre-cleanse to someone that wears heavy makeup or um, on dry skin right over top of their makeup. It removes it so well and it feels so silky on the skin. It's also a really great cleanser for people that just have super dry skin. So um, I like a little even drier skin. So I'll lay the client down, I'll wrap, I'll wrap their uh, put their headband on, wrap them in the towel. Steam is optional. I find it to be uh, nice for sense, uh, the sense, sensory, <laughs> I can't say sensorial, Sen sensory portion of the facial, uh, but not necessary. So about three or four pumps, and then right over top of the makeup, I can get really close to the eyes with, a, with this without it, um, you know, getting into the eye. When you add water, it turns from that gel until that milky white consistency. So I always like to put it on dry and then remove with sponges and uh, maybe a warm towel. After you uh, remove, you would use in your left hand uh, three to four pumps of the O2 enzyme, enzyme peel. Um, to the entire face. I feel like four to five pumps does the neck and the decollete. So I would spread first and perform a really relaxing effleurage movements for five to seven minutes. You're gonna feel this product kind of transform from a gel thicker consistency and it'll start to liquefy and you'll start to see that the, uh, the the product is going to start to ball up and roll off the skin. That's exactly the response you want. Sometimes it's always different from person to person. So sometimes it takes longer for this, this action to transform or start to happen on the skin. But the key is here is sometimes instead of doing slow, firm movements, you want to do a little bit more uh, light, uh, circular movements and a little bit more brisk of motion over the skin to get that working. Uh, you'll have time towards the end of the service to actually do a hand and arm massage or you know more of a relaxing shoulder, neck, shoulder, arm massage. So once you see that this product starts to exfoliate up the skin, you can go up to seven minutes. Usually it's about, about that. Um, you remove with warm sponges and a towel. Okay, I see that you guys have some questions raised. Is it possible for you to type your questions in? I see that you raised your, your questions box. So let me know. Go ahead and type those questions in. I'll be looking out for them. Okay, so um, you can go, you remove the uh, enzyme peel, uh, warm towel, and then this is the trick. So the, o the oxygenating, oxygenating mask, oxygenating. that you want to actually pump into a medicine cup. You're going to see it comes out in a gel-like consistency, and you want to apply it to the skin while it's still in its gel form and allow it to start to bubble and uh, allow that to start to bubble and uh, have an upturn on the skin because what it's doing is while it's turning from that jelly -like consistency into a bubble consistent, into that bubbling oxygenating mass, it's delivering that in its cloud-like form to the skin. It's gonna give the skin a lot of uh, oxygen and really perk it up, perk up the, the tone of the skin. So uh, you're going to let that sit about 15 minutes. It doesn't disappear. 
So if the cloud will usually stay on the skin until you remove it. And you can do, oops, I went too fast again. Sorry about that. So then you would take it off with a towel and you can start, the skin has now been treated. You can now start with their, um, their serum and their protection. So we have a little bit of our stem cell enhancer. Stem cells are great because they elongate the lifespan of the skin. Uh, I'm sorry, stem cells elongate the lifespan of our cells. So it keeps skin healthy, it's like a vegetable. So it keeps our cells healthy and gives them, a, gives them youth and a longer life. So that stem cell enhancer is really nutritious for any skin type. Uh, then you're gonna apply the tinted moisturizer right over top of it and a little bit of our hormetic lip treatment and then give your client a post-treatment trial kit to go. And it, uh, it says Yana, so if we take that 360 degree approach. And voila, a new you. So once again, this treatment is best done in a treatment series of six, or if it's that, that walk-in client that wants the instant result, um, that is definitely another option. Gosh, I'm so sorry these messages are coming through. I'm trying to keep them off the screen. Okay. Um, let's see here. I still don't see any questions coming through. Um, for those of you that have your hands raised. So um, that is the best way to communicate with me is to let me know what your questions are or I will be meeting with the Jyoti after the treatment you can always tell her what your questions are and I'll be able to um, talk about those as well at that point so let's move on to the Ormetic lift this is another one of your treatments the Ormetic lift solution is this beautiful bottle you see to the left it's four fluid ounces and you can actually get uh, applica 36, 32 applications out of each bottle. So there's a lot of, lot of it in there. <laughs> so um, the Ormetic Lift solution is for unbalanced skin, sensitive skin, dull looking skin. And it's a combination of pumpkin, papaya, pineapple, passion fruit, with a pH of 3.5 to 4.5, so very close to our skin's natural pH. Uh, it's, again, superficial. Uh, this is great modality treatment and some tips and tricks for it. It's a great, perfect first peel for acne-prone skin or breakout-prone skin. Uh, also recommended in the middle of a peel series to nourish and revitalize. So some Sometimes if you're going into a peer, peel series and it gets to be a little bit too aggressive, you can always come back to this and back off and uh, uh, do a little superficial um, peel at the time of their treatment. Here's our protocol. It's going to start, this is a little bit easier of a protocol. Uh, the Ormetic Cleanser is what you're going to use to uh, cleanse the skin. You don't need a lot and add some water, it creates a nice foam. Uh, and then you're going to measure an eighth of an ounce into the measuring Oh, oops, sorry about that. Let's go back. We're not ready for that yet. So you're going to measure an eighth of an ounce of the Ormetic Lift into a measuring cup and use the swab to uh, apply to the skin. And you're going to start at the forehead because usually that's where uh, the toughest places are to peel is that forehead area. And move to the right cheek, the left cheek, to the nose, the periola area, and allow uh, it to penetrate for up to says five minutes. Now some tricks with this is uh, don't worry about applying it evenly with the swab. What you can do is apply with the swab as they specify and you can actually move this around with your gloved fingertips. Uh, if you decide to massage a specific area it'll enhance the activity in that area and then if for somebody that is more sensitive you just want to apply with the swab with no ma manipulations. Just leave it alone. Uh, so this is a great peel for someone that is sensitive, for someone that has uh, acne and they need to decongest their skin 
uh, maybe they need a couple of these treatments before you can actually uh, receive benefit from doing extractions. So this is a great starter pill that happens to be very gentle and hydrating for the skin. So after you, um, after you remove, you will mask with a balancing gel mask, which is one of my favorites and try chilling it five minutes or 10 minutes before your treatment so you can get that sensory experience of having nice, cool application. Uh, I like to add an enhancer of my choice and it just depends on the skin indication. This is where you can customize your treatment. Uh, I think that a great enhancer that anybody could use is the antioxidant enhancer because antioxidants protect us from pollutants out there in the environment. And once you apply the gel mask, you can leave that on, maybe perform a nice um, uh, hand and arm massage, remove, and then add, um, you would remove that. And then based, oops, I did it again. And then based on the client's needs, choose an enhancer to add to the Ormetic Balance and Antioxidant Serum. Again, I think since you have some antioxidants in the, in the serum from Ormetic, that provides a lot of nutrition and healing for the skin. Maybe you could add some of that uh, stem cell enhancer uh, if their skin has been uh, malnourished. Or you could add the uh, hyaluronic enhancer if the skin is dehydrated. So there's your opportunity for personalizing it to your customer. Uh, finish with the Vital C Eye Recovery Gel, and then you're going to put on your daily protection, the Tinted Moisturizer SPF 30. I like to finish every treatment with that Lip Enhancement Complex. It's hydrating. Uh, usually people want to buy it after they try it because it just enhances the look of your service so well. So that in combination with the Tinted, people think that they actually uh, had a, a makeup application Okay, I have a great question coming through. So I'll answer it when I finish this protocol. Uh, so after we apply that lip, we've got the tinted moisture on them. They see that instant results. They are ready for their day. Um, you would give them their home care, which is that image post-treatment trial kit. And that has a full home care regimen for after their peel. And we want to book their next treatment for two weeks apart. So this uh, is a great question. What would you do for dehydrated skin? And you asked at such a great time because this is a great treatment for someone that has dehydrated skin. Uh, it's very nourishing treatment. It's very enzymatic. So they still have, a, when you have dehydrated skin, you could have flake, flaking, you could have dryness. So this is gonna hydrate and gently digest a lot of that superficial chapped skin and maybe give them a hydrating moisturizer, uh, which would be well received because they have that nice even uh, skin and they take that dead skin cells off the top. So my my favorite the uh, is the Vital C Hydrating Intense Moisturizer. It smells beautiful. It has a rich butter base and uh, it's extremely moisturizing. So one of my faves. Thank you for your question. Now we're gonna talk about your signature lift. This is my absolute number one favorite treatment. If you haven't tried it, uh, I think you need to get with your friend and you should try this magnificent four layer treatment. Uh, this signature lift is recommended for redness prone, dry dehydrated skin environmentally stressed skin because it uses a lot of a blend of vitamin C. And here at Image Skincare, we use four different forms of vitamin C in very stable formulations to deliver a lot of nutrition to the skin and help brighten it up. So the combination of vitamin C blend, enzymes, and hyaluronic acid, which is extremely hydrating as well, for you that have hydration concerns out there, um, this helps to brighten, hydrate, and smooth the complexion. This solution is um, four ounces, but since you apply it twice in the protocol to the skin, 
you get 16 applications or 16 treatments out of this four ounce bottle. It is all fruit-based enzymes. It has hyaluronic acid in it, which is not actually an acid. It's a water molecule that's extremely hydrating for the skin. And it has a pH of 3.0 to 3.5. So it's just a little bit deeper of a peel than, than uh, the O2 and the Ormetic. The plant-based stem cell that's used in here is a centella stem cell. This is a perfect peel in any of to do first in your treatment series because it's really a great prep to the skin before any deeper acid treatments. I also recommend it for brightening and revitalizing. And here's why. We're going to walk through the protocol so you can see why this is such a perfect service. Um, I personally love it because you get that combination of the use of enzymes to gently digest. And you get the, uh, a little bit of acid exfoliation uh, with the, with the uh, ageless cleanser in there. There's a little bit of glycolic. Plus you get a manual exfoliation. So it's the perfect trifecta of all three uh, types of exfoliation. I'm just going to take a moment. And Jody, I'm going to check in with you and see if there's anything you want to add. Um, I'm going to unmute you really quick. See if we can hear from you at this time. I think you're still self-muted. So beautiful. One moment, everybody. Okay, Jody, I'm, I see your hand raised there, or it's a question mark. So I'm not sure if there's something you would like to say, but I unmuted you, so you're welcome to chime in if there's anything new. How's it going? Can you hear me? Jody, everything. Hi, Jody. Everything good? I hear the music. Playing pop music instead of Angela. This is so cool. <laughs> okay, now you should be able to say something. I see that you're unmuted. You're on twice. I think you've logged on multiple times, Jody. Jody, yeah, so now, I'm now I'm unmuted. There you are. Now Hi, I'm okay. unmuted. I wasn't unmuted before. I don't know why. Why I'm showing up twice? Because I'm only on once on my screen, so that's weird. I don't um, know. I'm not sure. I see logged in like three three times with the same email, so it's okay. Let's. I just want to okay. make sure I got a hold of you and let you interject for okay. a little bit. Okay. I was just having. I was just having uh, connectivity issues. So when you were calling my name, I was trying to actually plug in my computer again. I'm like, I don't want to lose this connection. Um, no worries, you're good. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm sorry. Well, what was your question? No, I just wanted to check in because I with you because I saw maybe a hand raised or I saw a question marks up. So I wanted to just touch base to make sure that you had no questions and everything's good on your end. Yes, I mean, whatever questions the, um, you know, the, the student body has, I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, they've been asking some questions, right? I see the hydration questions that they brought up. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, good. We'll carry on then. Thanks for, yeah. just, thanks Another, for checking with you. <laughs> yes, sure. No, thank you. Okay, I'll go ahead and mute you now. Very good. All right, great. Thanks, class, for uh, bearing with me. So let's get back to the signature lip treatment, which is my favorite. First, you're going to start off with a great cleanse. So you're going to bring your client into the room. You're going to set them up in their in their uh, in the bed and wrap their wrap their hair, put their headband on, and then uh, the first step starts off with ageless cleanse. There now this foams, so you need a, a very small amount of it. I would say like a split pea sized amount and add water and get it to foam in your hand. Um, I think that that's the best way, or you're going to be removing this cleanser for days. It's going to get really foamy on you with those sponges. So less is more, create a foam in your hand and then spread and cleanse. You can uh, remove with tepid water and sponges or a cool to lukewarm towel. 
this is where you're going to prep using the degreasing prep solution. So in a medicine cup, you're going to want to have that prepared. Uh, I usually like to set up a pre-portion and set up the, the six medicine cups with the six different um, steps that's in here. So I'll have the ageless cleanser already pre-portioned into a cup. I'll have the degreasing prep solution already pre-portioned into the cup with the gauze in it. I'll have my signature lift solution in a cup with the cotton swab in it. And you can use the same signature lift uh, cup for both, both applications. And the same with, with the resurfacing mask and the enzyme mask. Um, so those are the four cups that I'll set up beforehand. And then I'll just dispense the finishing products as I go. So now that we've got our cleanse on, we're gonna squeeze out the extra in that degreasing, uh, degreasing prep solution from the gauze, and then firm pressure swipe, and you're gonna start in a horizontal to, and then vertical directions over uh, the entire face. So think of a basket weaving. If you go left to right, um, then you're gonna wanna go up to down, and I'll actually do the go from the eyebrow up to the hairline. And that makes it a little bit easier for me to do that basket weaving motion on the forehead. So go left to right and then up to down. And then you're going to want to go into the different directions. Um, you know, that's a good technique uh, to use. So again, start at the head, go to the cheeks, left cheek, right cheek, over the nose, over the chin, and jawline. Now, uh, if you decide to go a second round with a degreasing prep solution, Start in the opposite direction. So start at the forehead again, but then go from the right to left and go from the um, eyebrows up. So that way you uh, rotate where you started and the saturation of the gauze is gonna um, equally hit all parts of the face. So that is my best suggestion for decreasing and prep. And the firmer you are, the more passes you do, which I only recommend two at the most, uh, the deeper the permeability of the peel. So now that the skin is all um, prepped, decreased and prepped, you know, the, the client might say, wow, I feel that tingle. Uh, there's a little bit of glycolic and witch hazel in there, so it's okay if they feel that. Let the solution uh, dry up. You don't have to remove it. You can give them a little fan with a hand fan and just uh, wait about 30 seconds for all of that to evaporate, and then you're ready to apply the signature facelift. You measure an eighth of an ounce to a fourth of an ounce into a medicine cup, and then you're going to apply in circular motions beginning at the forehead. Move to the right cheek. Go to the left cheek nose, areola area, and then you can massage for one minute. Don't remove it, leave it on. And again, it's just an application. So you don't have to take too much time with a cotton swab. You can actually get a really even application by just massaging it for a minute. If someone's truly on the sensitive side and you see them, um, uh, you know, you might get pink from this peel, but if they're really uh, sensitive and you see the blood flow coming to the surface of their skin and they're getting red really, or red or pink really quickly, you can just don't manipulate because uh, manipulation will cause vasodilation and cause the blood flow to move towards the surface of the skin when you want to keep it nice and calm, some, you know, for someone that's reactive. So moral of the story, if they're reactive, no, manip no manipulation, no massage. Leave it on. The second layer is the ageless resurfacing mask. So now that you've applied this beautiful enzyme-based solution, you're adding the ageless resurfacing mask right over it with the cotton swab. Apply to the forehead, left cheek, right cheek, um, around the nose, periola area, jawline. And then you can massage. Light-handed massage, this is in a deep effleurage movement, it's light fingertips. Pretend like you're holding a bubble and take small circular movements lightly over the skin. You can do that for a minute and don't remove. The third layer, you're going to add the signature lip solution to the skin. And again, it's, you can use the same cup that you used before. It doesn't matter if it might be a little bit messy this time. It's completely okay. Each time you add another layer, 
there might be a little bit of spike of activity on the skin and then it'll dissipate because all those beautiful ingredients are playing off of each other and you're getting a burst of activity to the skin. It's beautiful. But this is still a great treatment. It's very um, effective, but it's still a great treatment because it's all enzyme, it's for the most part enzyme based, so it's not gonna be too deep on the skin, too, too um, harsh or abrasive. So um, now that we have this ageless resurfacing mask, we've applied a thin layer with the uh, swab, you can massage for one minute, and now you're gonna apply that second layer of facelift solution. Massage for one minute, move it on. The last layer is the Vital C Hydrating Enzyme Mask. Uh, you're gonna use the Q-tip to apply it over top, uh, the oversized cotton swab to apply over top of the previous first three layers, and then you can massage all five layers uh, up to five minutes, or you might just decide to let this all rest on the skin depending on what skin response you're getting. And uh, do a hand and arm massage. After five minutes uh, has gone by, so really if you think about it, this should be up to all four layers should be um, um, about I would say no more than 10 minutes total. I feel like that's a little that's a little going on each side. So layer one, one, two, three, four. Yeah, about 10 minutes, nine to 10 minutes uh, for all four layers to be sitting on the skin for from start to finish. And you remove with uh, sponges. Now, um, you want to keep removing until there's zero activity. If the client is like, no, it feels good, do it again. Light cans and completely rinse out your sponges, and you might want to change over your water, that you change over your water uh, and change over your sponges uh, so you truly don't have any cross-contamination in the sponges, putting the, the, you know, the ingredients back on the skin that was in the four layers. So you might want to change over, get fresh sponges, or just a cool towel to finish the deed until there's zero activity. Okay, now you're starting with the enhancement portion, step, step four. So pick the enhancer of your choice. This time I am going to choose uh, a little boost of vitamin C into the vitamin, vitamin C enhancer into the vitamin C hydrating anti-aging serum. And that is really going to add a boost of antioxidants. Vitamin C is a great antioxidant and really target lightening and brightening on the skin. So um, after I've applied that serum, I'm going to add the eye recovery gel around the ocular area, the orbital area, and then uh, a little bit of our Prevention Plus Hydrating SPF 30. We need our SPF. That is the most important step after a peel. <laughs> Add a, uh, your Ormetic Lip Enhancement Complex, and you are ready to go. Send your client home with a post-treatment trial kit. And uh, again, you can see the indications for this peel is at the bottom. So it's for redness-prone skin, dry or dehydrated, sensitive, post-microderm, post-surgery. And I think this is the best treatment for all skin types. Uh, just start off a full treatment series of six. So this is a great way to introduce your clients. Get instant results, but also acclimate them to be able to um, target with some deeper peel treatments, target specific.
guys, uh, taking those two treatments into two separate services would be the best. So the lightning lift for the face, and if somebody really wants to focus on the necklace, I would consider moving that into a different treatment until you've really got the protocol nailed down. So let's talk about this protocol. Uh, this is a little bit more of advanced treatment. It's a medium grade strength peel that uses now more active acids, the kojic and the lactic. And it starts off again with the ageless total facial cleanser. So get that foam going in your hand and cleanse, remove with uh, tepid water or sponges. Use the degreasing prep solution, squeeze the extra solution out and using that firm pressure, um, go in that basket weaving motion and swipe the gauze in a horizontal and vertical directions over the entire area to be treated. And again, you can take my suggestion or not to, um, you know, uh, map it out. <laughs> All right, so um, after we've decreased the skin, lowered the pH, now we're ready for the peel to be applied. So it's again, measuring, uh, set your peel up beforehand, set out your steps, uh, set your steps uh, out in a medicine cup with a cotton swab or the gloss beforehand so you know where to go. So uh, make sure you have measured out your lightning lift into a measuring cup and have that cotton swab ready. And again, you're going to start at the forehead being the most uh, uh, difficult place to peel. Usually it's the hardest. Move to the right cheek, left cheek, nose, pareola area. You can actually massage this peel up to one to three minutes. And the peel can be left on the skin for an additional seven minutes, gradually increasing with each treatment. So when they come back, instead of leaving the peel on for four minutes, you might be able to leave it on for six minutes. Uh, this is also removed with water and sponges. This peel, in my opinion, is the one that you really have to work hard to neutralize. And the actual feeling of the acids on here is a little bit prickly compared to more of a, a, a retinol where you, it might be a little bit more itchy. You can actually feel like little pricks on the skin with this active acid. So I feel like it, this is the one peel you're really going to want to make sure that you neutralize completely. Um, even if the customer says, you know, oh, it feels fine, neutralize with water again. And when you're uh, removing with the sponges, have light hands, really clean out the sponges. You might have to change your water over a few, time, few times and um, use cool water. When you start to remove this peel, uh, it is gel based, uh, all of them are, but this peel, uh, you tend to feel a little bit of activity once you start removing because the water gets in contact with the peel solution it starts to break it down um so no worries if they say they oh i feel it again that's normal and just the key to this one is neutralizing completely um here's my tip and trick for that if you really feel like you're having a hard time neutralizing it um have, make sure the skin is damp and then add a little hormetic cleanser to your fingertips and just give them a quick cleanse after you uh, remove the peel and then uh, remove that with uh, towel, cool towel or sponges. And that would be my pro tip to getting this peel successfully off <laughs> completely. So um, my pro tip, there you go for the lightning lift treatment is that um, after you remove the peel, you're going to start the masking portion of it. I love the vitamin C enzyme mask. And like, like I said, applying this post treatment is going to reduce the visible exfoliation that they're going to see two or three days after the peel was performed. And uh, this is also an item in the post-treatment trial kit. So they can, uh, they're going to end up coming back to purchase this product that most people fall in love with it. So take that vitamin C mask, uh, apply it with the mask brush, and you can add the enhancer of choice. Uh, sometimes I like to do the Kojic Enhancer if someone's focusing on pigmentation. That's really going to help to amplify the treatment for that. And you can leave it on for five minutes, remove it with sponges or a lukewarm towel. Uh, maybe that's a good time for you guys to do the hand and, uh, hand, hand and arm massage. 
So when you finish this, now we're going to go to the finishing serums. Choose the eye enhance of choice. For a lightning treatment, I would choose the Kojic enhancer. Uh, you could also do the vitamin C enhancer, but you want to add it to the Aluma Brightening Serum. One full drop of the enhancer. Apply to the treated area, let it absorb in. Add your Vital C eye recovery gel to the orbital area. Uh, this, both of these products are going to help with post-inflammatory post hyperpigmentation. So if somebody is having a lightning treatment, you want to make sure that in their home care regimen, they have some depigmenting agents to continue that process of lightening the skin. In the post-treatment trial kit, you'll see that the Aluma Brightening Serum is there. So it's going to be another power product for you to retail and sell and punch out those pigment spots. Don't forget to protect the skin using an SPF. The chosen one for this protocol is the Ultimate Moisturizer SPF 50. And then of course, my fave, the Ormetic Lip Enhancement Complex. And you want to provide your guest with a post-treatment kit. There is your lightning left. Okay, so we're going to continue on with the wrinkle lift. Um, this is great for aging skin types. It uses an active acid glycolic and retinol. Uh, it helps to uh, reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. And this retinol glycolic blend supports collagen and elastin uh, by exfoliating and stimulating that skin response. So here we have 30% glycolic acid, 1% retinol. It has an even lower pH of 2.5 to 3.5. And the stem cell is called Budaleha David. And uh, this is the healing stem cell for the skin. Just a sip of water. Thank you. Okay. So this is an alternative with lightning lift to fight aging skin and skin discolorations. So a lot of the time you'll find that clients have both of those concerns simultaneously. Oh, I'm aging, I have pigmentation, and I have wrinkles. You can, my suggestion would be to rotate the lightning lift service with the wrinkle lift service in their treatment series of six to combat both. This treatment starts off again with that ageless cleanser. You're gonna to get to know that product really well. Um, Create a foaming lather in your hand, get it nice and foaming, apply, cleanse, remove with tepid water. Again, your degreasing prep solution, you're gonna get very familiar with that. Squeeze out the excess and using firm pressure, swipe the gauze in both horizontal and vertical directions. Uh, you can go over twice for stubborn skin. Measure an eighth of an ounce to a fourth of an ounce of the wrinkle lift into a medicine cup and apply the same way you would apply the lightning or the signature, apply it with an eye swab in a circular motion, starting at the forehead, to the right cheek, to the left cheek, to the nose and the periola area. Massage for one to three minutes, and you can leave this on for an additional seven minutes. Uh, and if you're doing this treatment um, uh, a second or a third time, you can increase that time up to seven minutes for, with each treatment. Uh, this one, this peel is not as difficult to remove as the lightning, so uh, easy removal, in my opinion, with cool water. And again, I can't stress this enough. I think that uh, if you, if your customer says that it feels fine, you neutralize it again, and this is simply neutralized with water. And I think that that is uh, the biggest, uh, the, the the biggest feedback I get when a peel goes wrong is the neutralize neutral neutralizing, <laughs> little tongue tied, is neutralizing it. So um, neutralize away. If they say that, that it's good, just do it again. And common areas that people miss neutralizing is actually in the creases around the, the nose, uh, the labia folds, uh, the uh, corners of the eye, and underneath the chin. Yeah. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're neutralizing. Um, after this mask, 
I'm sorry, after the peel has been applied, you leave it on for seven minutes. Keep in mind, you can massage this as well in the areas of concern. So if somebody has, uh, you know, deep burrows or lap lines, you can actually focus in on that area there to increase the intensity of the, the peel in that area. Uh, it's not a deep massage. Picture your, your bubble. Someone blew a bubble and you're holding it and that's the type of massage, very light, uh, focused in circular motion. Okay, so uh, once this has been on, you're going to remove it until the client feels zero activity, and then we're going to use the plant, the MAP stem cell mask. Uh, choose the enhancer of choice, and for someone that is concerned about wrinkles in their skin, I think one of the uh, the one of the um, Stem, the enhancers I would use is the retinol. I'm not sure if you guys have access to that, but that is going to create exfoliation in the skin, supporting the collagen and elastin building of it. Or I would give them the stem cell enhancer, which is also anti-aging because it just gets so much nutrition to the skin uh, and elongates the lifespan of our cells. So it's a healing one. Um, you can uh, add that to the mask. Move it on for five minutes, do your hand and arm massage, then you're able to remove with water uh, and sponges. So now we're getting on to the, the treatment portion of it. They still recommend the Vital C Hydrating Anti-Aging Serum. I would use the stem cell enhancer, and then I would apply the MAC stem cell eye cream. I love that eye cream. It's nice and thick and rich and hydrating. Beautiful eye cream. Uh, and then this one calls for the Prevention Plus Ultimate Protection Moisturizer. Now, when you're applying sunscreens, I feel like the application makes a big difference. Instead of massaging this in, I would take the sunscreens, whether it's the tinted, the SPF 30 or the 50, I would take about a split pea sized amount into the fingertips of your hands and um, spread it amongst your fingertips and then I would just gently press it over the skin and then I would go back to reinforce it into the skin with just a light movement. I wouldn't massage it in circular motions because you, uh, into the skin. I would more press it into the skin to reinforce it in there. And if you're using the tinted, maybe use a, an extra sponge, uh, a makeup sponge or the foundation brush to get an even um, an even application. Um, but the other sunscreens, I would just gently push it so you can avoid like rolling of the product or uh, uh, getting too much on in one area, not enough in the other. So for me, it's a different application when you uh, apply sunscreen than it is if you were to apply a moisturizer, which is more of like you really massage it in. Oh, let's go back. Okay, so after we applied our sunscreen, again, the same finishing routine. Give them that instant gratification uh, and add that balancing lip enhancement complex. Treat their lips, it is skin too, and send them home with their home care ritual, which is the post-treatment kit. All right, we're almost through, guys. Thanks for being so patient. <laughs> the acne, oh, goodness. See, look at me jumping ahead. Okay, so we're here at the acne lift. This is recommended for congested skin, breakout prone skin. It uses that combination of alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids to really restore. a lot of that sebaceous activity and decongests from inside the pore out. It also has uh, a lower pH 2.5 to 3.5 and the Desmer stem cell is actually from lilac. So it's really great at supporting acneic skin types. Um, you can also use this treatment on the back of the arms uh, to treat keratosis pilaris, which is that rippling where it looks like a red pucker of the skin, okay? So great body treatment for that. 
I'm just going to read through, see if there's any questions. Now, here's our treatment. Now, this calls for a different cleanser. The salicylic gel cleanser, again, it's going to start decongesting from this part of the service. Uh, and the salicylic cleanser is going to foam up. You need about a split pea sized amount and cleanse the skin for one to two minutes. You might feel cool. Uh, the, cluster, the client might say they feel it tingly. Uh, it has a wintergreen effect, so it's going to be minty on the skin. Uh, then you're going to treat with the decreasing prep solution. So saturate the gauze, lose out the extra solution, and uh, with firm pressure, swipe. You measure the same amount up. It's an eighth of an ounce to a fourth of an ounce. And you would apply this in the circular motion, forehead, left cheek, right cheek, left cheek, nose, areola area. You may massage the peel for one to three minutes. And you may leave on for, an, this only says an additional five minutes, gradually increasing from one treatment to the next. So if you leave this peel on for three to four minutes in the first treatment, the next treatment you would be, be able to leave it on for five or six or six or seven. You wanna remove this thoroughly with cool water and sponges until there's zero activity felt. Now, um, if you want to see less exfoliation afterwards, use the Vital C Hydrating Enzyme Mask, another great option for acne clients, because those digestive en enzymes will, will exfoliate the skin while the mask hydrates. Another great product. Uh, and then choose the eye enhancer of choice for this person. Uh, I think this one, you get a little bit more flexibility. I feel a lot of people who suffer from acne uh, will benefit from the antioxidant enhancer because it balances that, that skin. And that's a different conversation. So I'll leave it at that. But try the antioxidant enhancer to, to rebalance and re-nourish um, acne on skin. Um, and then perform your uh, hand massage while the mask is sitting. You can choose, to, you can remove this with sponges and cool water after about five to seven minutes and then customize this treatment by picking the enhancer of choice and adding it to the brightening serum acne clients often have pigmentation issues because of pox scarring uh, darker fitzpatrick's because melanin is already present in their skin if they have an abrasion to the skin <laughs> the skin's response will pigment in that area so having uh having a uh, brightening serum or a pigmenting agent goes hand in hand with acne treatments. So lucky for you, it is in the post-treatment kit, but here they call for it as the serum option. And you're going to use the Vital C Eye Recovery Gel. We have a great Prevention Plus Matte Moisturizer. It's an SPF 32, and it happens to be my favorite. Even though I don't have dry, um, oily skin, I have very normal skin but I love the finish on it. So this is my favorite Prevention Plus product, the Daily Matte Moisturizer SPF 32. A touch of that lip enhancement complex, and then you give them their post-treatment kit for their home care, and you are ready to go. Here are our enhancers. So these are the different elevated options uh, for your customers. The hyaluronic enhancer is a water molecule that holds its weight 1,000 times. So if you picture one water molecule, picture a thousand of them in just that one drop. That is how hydrating hyaluronic acid is. Um, this adds moisture to all skin types and binds the water to the cells and is responsible for a lot of the elastin and the skin resilience. The kojic acid is also suitable for uh, Ulf Fitzpatrick's, and it helps punch out that pigment in the skin. It's good for sun damage, photoaging, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, and melasma. It has antibacterial benefits, and it's really great for acne. It corrects um, uneven skin tone as well. Um, so this, don't overlook this, because this is also a great option, this kojic enhancer, for... Um, uh, adult acne with maybe more pock scarring and they want to reduce those those pock uh, discolorations around their marks.
The antioxidant enhancer has 15 powerful antioxidants. And just basically, here's what an antioxidant is. Um, we come in contact with smoke, smog, pollution, and all those. Uh, and we also, you know, have some intrinsic factors too, like uh, bad diet and there's smokers and drinkers. These are all these are all things that cause cell desquamation or cell degradation. And what antioxidants do is they're pollutant protectants. They will neutralize the free radicals that are floating out there that damage our cells and prevent them. Um, from um, latching onto our skin cells and destroying them. So antioxidants equal pollutant protectants. That's why everybody can use a little bit of that. Uh, Retinol. This is a great product for the, uh, an enhancer for anybody that's concerned about uh, anti-aging or if you want to see the visible exfoliation of the fact on the skin. Uh, retinol does it increase the exfoliation. It revitalizes the skin, brightens skin to discoloration, promotes uh, reduction of acne, and stimulates collagen. It's really a wonderful product. I think that you have to build a tolerance um, to retinol. So if someone's never experienced it before, please introduce them to one of the lower percentages of retinal products in the Asian collection uh, before you give them like the heavy the heavy guns. I think you have to build up their tolerance to that a little bit because skin responses can be uh, dry or itchy. So maybe rotating this in once or twice a week into their home ret care regimen for some of those wrinkle lift treatments before some of those wrinkle lift treatments is really going to get a better skin response post post peel. Okay, the next one is the stem cell enhancer. I love stem cells. They're nutritious. They're like vegetables for our skin. Uh, they're plant derivative stem cells to support, support healthy skin. So tetrahexadexyl asorbate is an antioxidant. And which one you ask? It's vitamin C. So it's one of the different forms of vitamin C that we formulate with. And again, um, the full name is tetrahexadexyl asorbate, which means one of the different forms of vitamin C that we use. Comfrey root reduces redness and licorice. That's a skin brightener. So these are just some of the stem cells that are in this product. And then finally, the vitamin C enhancer is great for all skin types, truly, but dry, dehydrated, sensitive, environmentally damaged, because remember, vitamin C is a powerful antioxidant, and it boosts, um, it, it boosts a boost for aging skin and again it's this form of um, these two forms of vitamin C in here tetrahexadexyl sorbate and uh, ethyl sorbate and again both are both vitamin forms of vitamin C that are potent antioxidants now let's talk about actually creating a treatment series for your guests like I said, these gel-based peels that we just discussed are uh, able to be done in a treatment series of six. And you can space them two weeks apart from each other, and you can repeat that once a season, so four times a year. Um, first, you're going to start off with your consultation, and this is how you're going to structure and, and make your recommendations. You're going to have them fill out their consultation form, check for any contraindications, which we're going to go through that in a minute. And then you're going to um, look at the, uh, consider a couple of different aspects of the skin. So what their main concern is, the pH of the skin, the hereditary influence, and the that's Patrick. And then you can start creating a peel treatment series. My advice is to start off slow and low until you really understand uh, all the ingredients in the peel and how the, that those have effects on the skin. So, um, and then acclimate them to be able to receive a deeper treatment that's more geared to their, their skin indication. So first you wanna start off in week one with maybe more of an enzymatic peel, like the Ormetic, the O2 or the Signature. Uh, and then take them to week three to uh, another superficial peel, which is instead of the O2, maybe you want to do the signature left or the aromatic. Week five, repeat, 
And then week seven, uh, acclimate them to a deeper treatment because you're getting good skin response and, and you see that you're getting results. So now they're ready to move up to the next level. So if they're more concerned about wrinkles, take them to the wrinkle lift. If they're more concerned about lightening, uh, you can go with the lightning lift. If acne is their main concern, they can go to that you know, And then repeat at week nine. And then week 11, you could uh, uh, either finish them off with, with their if, you know, deeper chill one, uh, or you could hit them up with an advanced treatment. So at that week 11, it's really how you want to end the treatment. Do you want to um, give them more of that superficial, or do you want to go all the way in advance? But the idea is to be able to start slow and then acclimate them to the active acids um, throughout the treatment series. Here are some peel contraindications. I think it's important to talk about this with your clients. So uh, if you're consulting and someone has used Accutane, uh, take a picture of this slide. You guys might want to do that so you can keep it. It's hard to remember all these things. So if someone's used Accutane in the 6 to 12 months, that is a peel contraindication. Uh, if they had prescribed topical pyrolytics, in the past seven days. So Tazerac, Differin, Retin-A, Renova, Aslac, these are all um, names you might hear up there for you know, topical creams that will exfoliate within the epidermal, epidermis. So those are all contraindications, they're out. And um, you wanna make sure that they discontinue use of these things seven days prior to the treatment and sometimes a little bit longer than that. Um, Current use of hydrocortisone, if there's known allergies to any of the ingredients of the peels, for instance, if someone is allergic to aspirin, they have a salicylic acid allergy because those are uh, very similar to each other. So someone is allergic to aspirin, they cannot do uh, any clear cell salicylic products or the acne lift peel. If they're currently under supervision of a dermatologist for a skin disorder, that is a contraindication, and so are autoimmune disorders. You definitely don't want to put a, a, a peel on a sunburn or anybody that has open sores, a rash, or lesions, or recently has had surgery. So please keep this in mind while you're doing your consultation. So uh, this image is a poor neutralization. Well, this is an adverse reaction. And I won't say that it's specifically to poor neutralization, but this is what post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation looks like. It's this red blotchiness of the skin. It almost looks like um, the skin has had a lesion. And this, is, this can happen um, from a few different things that could go wrong during the peel. So if you didn't neutralize appropriately, that's the number one um, reason why I see post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Um, so, oh, you might hear my dog bark. Come here. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I have a work buddy today. So um, poor neutralization is the number one reason I see post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Um, the skin wasn't prepped. So if you did a, a too strong of a peel and maybe the person didn't start prepping at home or they didn't go off uh, their topical par keratolytics prior to the peel, that could also be a reason. Um, if the skin is eerily, easily irritated or sensitized, uh, prolonged arrhythmia, scabbing, or scar breaking. So if, if the client is exposed to uh, any, you know, poor neutralization, skin not prepped, we're starting with the peel too strong. Those are pretty much the three main reasons you see adverse reactions. But these um, these are also some, some contraindications of starting off with the peel too strong. So the PHI, too sensitive, arrhythmia, scabbing, and scarring. Uh, the best red Okay. 
with those fields. Usually you can not stay after a field, the skin will feel tight. You know, like you know, people might say, oh what how I look but their skin is getting ready to it's fully especially if there's a little shininess or like a glass um, tight tone to the skin. The peels usually starts to happen around the mouth first and then it'll spread around the nose. Uh, and in some cases, it might take a little bit longer for exfoliation to happen. So up to 72 hours for that to start. Um, once the exfoliation starts to happen, um, they can use the hydrating enzyme mask in their uh, post-treatment kit to reduce uh, the visible effects of exfoliation. And uh, they can start using uh, the kit almost right away. So that night after the peel, I would keep it very neutral and use the Ormetic wash and leave the skin, you know, with the Max Cream on it, which is also in the post treatment kit. And then the next day they can um, start to use, you know, the Max and Cream again. And when they start seeing the exfoliation, they can add in maybe the serum and the mask portion of their treatment. But every day they should be using a sunscreen during daytime hours. So now that since we're talking about the care portion of it, you see this post-treatment kit highlighted down here. That is what it looks like. And it has the full skincare regimen for your customer to be able to take home after a peel. If someone does experience an adverse reaction, again, they need to um, keep it cool, stay out of sun, stay out of sweat, stay out of the sauna or working out for a couple of days. Rescue treatment balm uh, if someone's really irritated, red hot, and itchy. And then when the skin starts to heal, you want to make sure that they have those depigmenting agents in their home care regimen to reduce the post inflammatory hyper for treatment. Kit. It's to heal the skin after the peel. You can see the Ormetic Cleanser, Hydrating Enzyme Mask, the Aluma Brightening Serum, and a Prevention Plus SPF 30. Oh, it says it right here. <laughs> so this kit includes those items, and it's a mandatory thing you want to do for your customer after appeal. Here are some other musts. Again, avoid sun and heat. Allow the skin to shed on its own. Please do not assist. And avoid things like chlorine, steam, and you want to tell your customer to avoid glycolic, retinol, and lactic acids for up to 72 hours after their peel. Um, Post-kit. Uh, reasons to hand out a post-kit. So after chemical peels, after microderm, Fraxel, derma roller or needling, dermaplaning, blue light, radio frequency. I just thought it was really neat to see how versatile the, that post treatment kit is and how effective it is at healing the skin after the peel. And here is that amazing bomb I was talking about. So um, if there's excessive irritation to a peel, you can use this eye rescue post treatment recovery bomb, uh, not only for peels, but for waxing, IPL, not a blade of laser, dermaplaning, and everything. And you can also sell this to the clients to use at home as well. I've gotten sunburns, and it feels great on a sunburn. I've even had it on itchy bug bites. And again, it's just been a lifesaver to cool, to calm the skin. Okay, so now we're talking about some healing times. Um, so if you're dealing with superficial peels like the O2 lift, the Signature lift, or the uh, Ormetic, these are very superficial, and even some of the new things are Like, you can consider the lightning lift, the acne lift, lift, and the wrinkle lift also to be a great streak. Uh, the heel time is about seven days. 
And for those medium to advanced meals, we're 17 to 40, 14 days. So that is why we recommend your next treatment after two weeks. Um, by doing that, the cell turnover rate is about one month, 28 days is the cycle for cell turnover. So when you have a treatment two weeks uh, into the cell turnover time, you're actually creating some kind of results there because you're, you're stopping, you're treating the skin in the middle of its cell turnover cycle. So you can really get a, a, a very effective uh, clinical result. And I can see, I don't know if you guys uh, have tried this or not. Uh, this is an alternative to sunscreen. It has an SPF 30. It's for all skin types. It comes in six different shades. I actually will add a pinch of this to the tinted moisturizer or my moisturizer to create a tinted sunscreen. And it's very lightweight. It has plant-based stem cells. It allows the skin to breathe. And it is perfect after field treatments. Um, it, and it's a medium coverage, so you can you can definitely get that instant results that you're looking for. I love our I can Seal products. I'm going to turn it over to you guys. I wanted to say thank you all uh, for coming today. I know it was probably a little bit longer of a class than you bargained for, but I had a lot of fun teaching it. Uh, I'd love to hear your questions, so I'll stick around for a while and see if you guys have anything to ask me. And uh, I wanted to also give a big thank you for attending today. I hope you enjoyed being here as much as I did. And I look forward to hearing some uh, questions or responses come through. And uh, you're welcome to reach out to Jody. Uh, if she would like to, uh, you know, ask some questions or if she would like to uh, set up another education for you guys, I'd be more than happy to do that. So just communicate your needs to Jody and any other questions that I don't see come through and you thought about them later, feel free. So at this point, um, I'll say thank you again to you all. I'll see if Miss Jody has anything to say here, and I'll just mute myself and I'll stick around for any questions um, that uh, might come through. Thank you all for attending, and I'll, I'll hang out for the next five minutes to see if you have any questions. Hey, um, hey, Jessica. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, thanks for this awesome presentation. It was uh, it was very very comprehensive. I appreciate that. One of the questions, one of the questions um, I had. Um, why there's a lot of echoing? But one of the questions is, you know, we come across different types of clients, and you may have already, um, you know presented this to them, but I just want to put it out there. Is there a certain peel that you would start with to be more on the safe side if they've never had a peel before? Or they have a peel and now they want to go some, you know, something a little bit more moderate and then take it to a little more advanced? Because um, that is the question that we get asked a lot at the front desk, because people are too scared to get chemical peels. It's almost like they're thinking that they're going to the school and they're getting more so of like a medical grade peel, which is really not the case. These are mild version of peels, unlike in a doctor's office, you know? Great question. Um, and I can certainly answer that. If you hear an echo, then just mute yourself because that would create the echo when we're both on off of mute. So I love this question. Your go-to starter peels, you guys have three options. And instead of using the word peel, I like to use the phrase enzyme and gently digest instead of I'm going to do a peel, a peel on you. How would you feel about hearing it that way? First, I am going to gently uh, remove any of the dead surface debris on your skin using enzymes that gently digests any of the superficial um, skin, skin cells. You're going to feel smooth to the touch and polished. That appeals to persons um, in a different way than what you would say when you, versus I'm going to provide the 
the signature lift peel for you today. It's a trigger one. So now that you have the knowledge, change your verbiage a little bit. I think the best service and front desk to start off with is going to be the O2 lift. There's no downtime and it looks great under makeup applications and they get instant results. The Ormetic lift. And that's going to be another um, application of a peel treat of a enzyme treatment that's going to gently digest you know, the dead surface debris. And then the signature lift, I equally will recommend these three treatments to the person who has had no experience with peels walking in the door. Um, the difference between the two is how the peel is performed. So the, o, the O2 lift, it's that oxygen treatment and there's manipulation behind it. Um, so I would do that for someone that really wants that glowy skin. Maybe it's a night out on the town that really wants to perk up the blood flow and get a lot of oxygen and deliver to their skin. The O2, uh, the Ormetic Lift, that's just a peel application. So someone who's super sensitive um, or has a lot of congestion in the skin and some flaking, and th that would be a good starter. As I'm treatment to gently digest some of the congestion. So superficial congestion and absorb a little bit of the uh, uh, sebaceous activity on the skin. So that or medic lift, I would do for sensitive nicks, skin tight, it's walking in. And then a signature is my my go-to is for all skin types, even acneic skin types. Um, because you layer the peel with a mask that has a uh, physical exfoliation in it, um, I tend to steer, oh, when somebody is like really inflamed by touch, um, I tend to steer away from the manipulation portion of that, like the massage portion of that, just to not create heat on the skin. So I think that is super great for all skin types. And instead of doing any massage of the peel or the product into the skin for someone that has more sensitivities, I just leave the solution and apply with the, the cotton swab only. But still, completely appropriate for the person walking in on the door starting their treatment series. Let's see if I can. Um, I'm gonna unmute it. Okay, Jody, I think that you can unmute yourself again, and hopefully that answered the question. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you for that. Um, and if we, I don't know if there's any more questions coming in. Um, if I'll not, check to see if there's any last questions. You all are welcome to, um, you know, communicate with Jody and ask for what it is you'd like from me. If you have questions, if you want to do another Q and A, if there's a specific training you want, please communicate your your requests. Um, I am happy to help out, you know, with, with answering those questions. Okay, so I do have a couple of questions coming through. So samples, I hear a lot of requests for samples and the O2 for beginners. So I would talk to Jody about getting samples and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have a conversation with her about that. But the O2 is, yes, it's very true. That is uh, great for, for starting off in a treatment series, not only for you, but for you guys to get comfortable with a, a treatment feel series. It is the mildest of all of the, the peels. So for you guys to get Just so. 